Hi, good evening, everyone. Hello, Dr. Moi. How are you this evening? Hey, Dr. Good. How about you? Good to see good you after. again. Very yeah. good. Very good. I look forward for good responses on this uh, talk. Okay. Yeah. Hi, good evening, uh, Kui Moi. Good evening, Olivia. Okay, we 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 can maybe start by asking uh, those those who are attending uh, to uh, introduce themselves. Okay, and uh, maybe state where they are from, which which company. Very good evening to everyone. Welcome to this evening's webinar. Uh, we have the speaker, uh, Dr. Mui, here today with us, a good friend of mine. We have been, we have known each other for yeah. many years. And today he will be talking about uh, project management related stuff. Okay, he's an expert in this field, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so we we'll share some good knowledge to everyone, and hopefully everyone can pick it up and use it in the job or in the work and enhance the career yeah. path. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, getting more people in already. Yep. Oh, we have someone, Olivia, Olivia from Saramban. Uh, Olivia is a teacher, by the way. Oh, okay. 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 So, uh, good. We have, from the we have uh, Christine. Christine is from Osram. Mm. And uh, we have a couple of our staff here as well, engineering staff here, probably. Right. right. Okay, uh, anyway, we are about to start. We are waiting for more people to come in so that we can uh, start the introduction. At the, at the meantime, make yourself comfortable. All of us are at home. I think we are very comfortable sitting on our favorite seats. <laughs> I think this week should be getting more people uh, going back to work. Uh, this factory site. Uh, yesterday, I think the uh, MITI has announced that those are approved to work early on, which is in the 50% work force on, and now I think we can go full swing. So, uh, for manufacturing, for manufacturing, I think we'll be getting busier back. Uh, maybe yeah. I think more and more um, people better in the office. Mm. All right. So, I think, yeah, hopefully things are back to normal soon. All right. Okay. And continue with your, your actual project in the factory, <laughs> in the work environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people, um, random, the uh, like one, they see it here already. Nikki, okay. Any? Soreha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Mui, yeah, you have to probably maybe yeah. speak louder because there's a, a, someone saying that uh, it's quite hard to hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Is it you better? Have... Yes, I think it's better now. Yeah, all right. I will, I will remind you like, through the private chat. Yes, okay, yes, uh, you know, okay. I need to remind you. Huh? And, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, Charlene is here now. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Suling. Hi, Suling. Okay. Again, hi to everyone. Welcome to today's uh, webinar. This evening's webinar with me today is Dr. Moi and myself. I'm Gerard Boy from Segi College. And I hope that all of you have uh, taken dinner and are ready for this evening's sharing from Dr. Mui. Hi, everyone. For those uh, already at 35 PMP, uh, this is uh, a bit refreshed, but I will share some uh, information that's shared by PMI and the latest developments on the project management uh, industry uh, so that people have some uh, latest info. What is the trend on uh, the project management that will be also said? Okay. There are quite a number of certified project manager here. 
Hi, Daniel. Okay, I think uh, it's about time. It's already eight. Okay, uh, let me check how many people are on board. Uh, we have about 40 right now. We're expecting about 100. So I think they will be trickling in soon. Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe uh, should I start? The introduction, Dr. Mui. X01. Uh, let me see. Uh, maybe another one more minute and we can start. Huh? Okay, okay. We can still wait. No problem. Yeah. I think we have a half people then, about 50 plus, then we can go. Huh? Hi, Rosie. Uh, the number is getting up very you nice. Know, about 47, I think. Okay. Yep, 49. 50. All right, you can go ahead. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, very good evening to all of you who just uh, came into the uh, webinar. Uh, very good evening. Uh, I am actually Gerard Boy from Segi College, Penang. Today, uh, we have an event uh, organized uh, between Segi College and Career Growth. Uh, and I have with me uh, Dr. Mui this evening, who is a specialist in the field of uh, project management and also in the areas of coaching and training. He has been doing this I think for more than 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. I've known him for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. First time I knew, yeah. got to know him. He was already uh, in this area. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me let me try to explain uh, the title today. Today is how project management knowledge and skills can enhance your business and career path. That is the title for today's or this evening's uh, presentation. So a soft reminder here, any questions that you are wanting to ask, uh, please uh, use the live chat and uh, we have moderators behind this uh, session to actually collect those questions and post it up live so that we can actually uh, tri uh, trigger uh, Dr. Mui to answer those questions. And we have a Q&A session uh, open at the last 10 minutes towards the end of the presentation. And uh, if you continue to attend and you will actually uh, be given a digital certificate at the end of this uh, talk, we will be giving you a link where you can actually uh, go to the link and fill up the form. Uh, Snaggy College, together with uh, Career Growth, will be giving you a digital certificate for attending this webinar this evening. Okay. So uh, today's uh, topic, as I mentioned, okay, is related to project management. So uh, we'll be introducing to you Project Management Institute and the benefits of being a member and what are the credentials about and how you can obtain them from PMI. Okay, the speaker is uh, IR Dr. Mui. Uh, he will be introducing to you and PMI, a guide to the project management body of knowledge, okay, good practices, and share his personal experience of using this guide in his everyday work and industry. And today he is a consultant giving ideas uh, to uh, young engineers. Okay, so uh, the key learning points are summarized below. I want to uh, mention all of them. I will now uh, give you a bit of background about Dr. Mui. Dr. Mui is a graduate from the University of Sunderland, UK, and he has a degree in engineering, uh, majoring in mechanical engineering, and a, a master's in uh, science in advanced me uh, mechanical engineering from University of Warwick, and also holds a PhD in management. Okay. He has uh, 22 years of work experience on leading and managing various projects, portfolios in various industries such as electronics, telecommunications, automotive, construction, and many, many more industries. And he has helped many, many uh, organizations improve uh, project management and also uh, involved in launching new products and projects. Okay. Uh, today, Dr. Mu is focused, very focused in providing project management training, coaching, consulting, Okay, to local and OC clients. is currently the subject expert matter for project management PMI, uh, exam preparation bootcamp, and he, is, he ha has helped many project managers okay, get this qualification uh, through those exams. And today, uh, he and his organization has trained more than 1,000 candidates uh, for this particular exam. And, uh, and uh, 
Without further ado, I would like to pass the uh, mic to uh, Dr. Mui so that Dr. Mui can actually uh, proceed with today's uh, presentation. Over to All you, right. Dr. Mui. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jirat. Thank you for the nice introduction. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, two hours uh, project management talk. Right now, I, I try to share my screen. Um, All right. Show my PowerPoint. Can everyone see my PowerPoint? Jarrah can see, huh, Jarrah? Uh, all right. Yes, you can see. Okay. All right. So, again, um, this talk I will make it into a more interactive. I make it into more interactive. We have a lot of quiz to ask all of you. I mean, for those who have uh, already a certified PMP, uh, most of the questions could be uh, refreshed, but some may be new to you. All right. So, for those who are new, new to project management, uh, it will be interesting to, to find out more about it. And, but of course, I will say for those who are experienced project manager, I will share what is the uh, latest trend and in terms of project management um, directions, uh, even in, in what kind of a uh, uh, project management process to be focused in the, in the, in the upcoming um, years. All right. So the talk will be very interactive. I hope you participate. There are a lot of questions right, to be asked. Okay. Now, as what Dr. Jarrod has mentioned just now, um, the key points are, are focusing on a few um, for those who are new to PMI, I will do a very quick introduction about PMI and also the PMI Malaysia chapter. We have a local chapter here to, to uh, promote the learning of project management. I will also introduce the different types of uh, PMI certifications that um, you can go forward to obtain. Of course, some of you already here already are certified PMP, but there are other certifications that you can consider, right? And I will also talk about the requirements to be certified and then uh, how do you go about it right i'm also focusing on uh, the key one is the uh, pinball guide knowledge right the pinball guide knowledge is something that um very beneficial to uh, most of the industry right so this pinball guide has been around for more than 20 years i will depict the, um, the five process group the 10 knowledge area and also uh, have a quick introduction about the 49 processes right then the last the, 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 the important point is uh, how this knowledge can help your business or help your career path. And the other most important point is the pay package. How much the certified project manager are paying in the industry, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the worldwide market, or even in Malaysia. Malaysia is something that I think we are more, more interested to look into, right? The future trend and expectation we look into as well. Now, um, my first question is, how much is the average monthly salary of project manager uh, we have 10 to 15 years of experience earning in Malaysia. You can, you can, you can type your answer on the chat. Uh, let me see whether I can see the answer. Okay. You, you can give you a little bit of time. How much is the average monthly salary for a project manager who having about 10 to 15 years working experience um, with that kind of a salary per month? Yeah, ABC over there. Can you put your answer on the on the live chat? Let me take a look on the, the response. Eh? All right, we have various answers. Eh? Okay. So wow, well, we have ABC, all different type of answer. I give a little bit of time. I will let you know the answer in a short while. All right, most people are. I see most people mention B or C, all right, okay. Oh, some even indicate nine to 10K, all right. Mm -hmm. Robert, okay. Any more, any more? Average, average salary, right? average salary in Malaysia, in Malaysia perspective, okay. Okay, all right. So I think most people indicating about uh, B and C. Right? B and C is basically the salary range is about nine to uh, eleven thousand, which is quite uh, close. The answer is actually um, more towards the eleven thousand, right? Eleven thousand. Now let, let me let me show you the the data. What what has been transpired in the industry um, about this salary survey? Now, um, 
PMI have done the survey. You see, this is a this is a report from PMI. The font is a bit small, right? The uh, this is the the most recent uh, salary survey. These are eleven versions and, and published in somewhere in January or February this year by PMI and uh, extract the Malaysia pay package, right? Which is about um, close to 11, 11 plus thousand, right? Um, especially for those eleven, I mean, this is the average figure among all the all the levels, right? From junior to the very senior level, right? Of course, if you go into the uh, years, uh, years of the uh, years of uh, service, and it's about one hundred twenty six thousand. I mean, it's about close to about eleven thousand uh, per month of salary in average, right? For the median, I'm talking about median, medium salary. Okay. Now, of course, for those who are work more years, I think 15, uh, 20 years, maybe on the high side, 170,000. And even though those who are work um, 20 years above, maybe we get about close to 200,000 a year of salary a year. This is a year. This is annual, annual salary, right? Of course, there are different positions, maybe getting different uh, salary. I mean, from the junior level of project managers to the most senior project manager, program managers to the director or uh, of the program at PMO office that may be getting a 20,000 or more salary per month, right? So this report um, is already uh, published by PMI. Um, some of you may have seen that, but I, I want to emphasize that this is something that quite uh, close to the reality. I mean, they based on the 440 sample size of this uh, salary survey, right? This report has dissected uh, very detailed about uh, salary package by different techniques or different uh, so-called uh, application or practicing area, for example, in the agile right, or iterative agreement in extreme project. These are all in the mostly in the IT and software project, and now branded in in other industry as well. Process based uh, project portfolio, right? So lean and then uh, waterfall. Typically, traditional is a waterfall predictive for project management, risk management, right? Then uh, the report also look into the. Uh, based on the, the years of analyzed uh, work experience involved, which is the one that we made already just now. And then the uh, degree, I mean, whether you have a higher degree, you get more pay. Uh, yes, you have a, if you have a master degree above, and it's sure, I mean, you, you get a higher pay generally, right? So, and uh, now this is having a degree on, not degree in project management, there's also a slight difference, right? So this may encourage people to, uh, for a degree in project management. But the important point that I want to point out is the uh, certified, right? Having a certification, a PMP certification. You see the, having a PMP certification and non-PMP certification, there is a gap, right? To, project managers that do not have certifications is generally average, we got about 120,000 compared to um, those having a certification easily have uh, more than 140,000 and above, right? This is something that shows a significance so the uh, certification of a project manager of PMP is that it does make a difference uh, to the to the pay package of the project manager. So for those who have not obtained your PMP, you must go ahead to obtain your PMP. I will talk about a bit more later about this PMP. And for those already a PMP, uh, please maintain your PMP. Don't simply let it slip uh, the certification or the maintenance of the so-called renewal, right? So make sure you renew them. Renew it uh, every 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 three years. We talk about it in a short while in the more detail. Okay. Now, um, female and male is the same, more or less the same pay package in terms of the project managers. There's no much difference, right? Um, this is during the buy industry. Okay. By industry, there are some differences. Of course, I think the generally the energy industry will pay more than the others, right? Um, then this is by the uh, Project type, uh, that's another uh, measure by project type, and the uh, number of employees in the, in, in the organizations, and the team size. The biggest the team size, of course, you, um, you get a more pay than generally. This is commensurate uh, with the amount of uh, effort to manage a bigger team. Um, project managers have to put more efforts. Uh. All right, so this is the kind of uh, analysis. You can you can have this report if you want. You can, you can get it, copy, or can forward you a copy as well if you want this. No. Um, the other measurement is from this, uh, I want to share is from the, uh, um, another survey, which is by the uh, um, Salary Explorer. I mean, this Salary Explorer shows the uh, 
uh, survey also, I think they are they talk about average, average in Malaysia is about 9,160, right? This is irregardless of, of the level, right? Overall average, the salary that we have in for, for project managers now. But you talk about number of years, um, which is 10 to 15 years, is, which is quite, quite close that we talk about this now, 11,000, 11,900, right? So it's about that. You see the, the jump of the project manager's salary, um, the first, 10 years actually having the quite a big jump compared to the, the next 10 years is less. So typically like that, like, man, suddenly getting higher and higher, uh, increment is difficult, all right? So uh, you will have to add on the additional skill, additional experience to make the next move, all right? Maybe some of you are here, some of you already here in the two, five, some maybe in the five, 10, some even here, I think some of you already here and some maybe here as well, right? So this study do shows that very, very correlate what PMI have studied, right? This is a Malaysian study on the salary, okay? And uh, this is during the breakdown, right? Okay, this are other, other detail. Okay, this is a, the uh, degree now, education. You see the um, bachelor degree and the master degree, it, it do still have some gaps in terms of the uh, so-called monthly salary. So I, I would encourage you, don't stop a bachelor degree. Go ahead for a master degree as well. Right? You can uh, you can join a SAGI university for a master degree. Right? So they do offer a part-time or full-time master degree. You can consider that as well. That may help you to move up your salary. That's one of the factors. All right, so I, 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 I go back to my slides. And uh, thank you for answering the question. Now, another question. Which industry pay the highest salary for project manager? I want to get your feedback. Which industry? Is it oil and gas? Is it constructions? Is it manufacturing? Can I have your answer? No, let's see. What, what, what do you think? Huh? Which, which industry pay the highest for the project manager? I want to hear from you over here. Okay. Which industry pay the the highest let's see the, 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 the input okay most of you say oil and gas all right okay any other option oil and gas yeah hmm. now the oil price is very low huh? but still 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 paying well huh? still paying well on oil and gas all right good um okay <laughs> robert no saying that previously a and now no more huh? okay now uh, things may change, may change. We see how we see, but still, still um, at the moment, at the moment, still uh, oil and gas still paying the highest salary for the project managers. Right? Thank you for the feedback. We may have more quiz along the way. Now, who is PMI? Right? Another question I want to answer. Who is this PMI? A. People Management Institute. C. B. Process Management Institute. And C. Is Project Management Institute. So can you quickly give your answer? Who is this PMI? Let me hear the answer. Surely you can get the answer correct. All right. So I saw answer is C. Oh, all right. So very consistent. All right. So you, okay. All right. Good. Good. I think this is straightforward. Um, the answer is actually I mentioned many times. Right? So most of you say is C. That's correct. Now, the other question is uh, what is mean by pinball? I just quickly recap. What is mean by pinball? A, a project management body, uh, project management best of knowledge, best of knowing, and then the B is project management body of knowledge. C, project management better of knowledge. All right, let's let's write your answer on the on the on the live chat. Is it A, B, or C? Right. What is pinball? Actually, the full definition, the full name is pinball guy. Right? What is pinball means, right? Okay, let's see the answer. See what is your. All right, I think some say C, some say B. Eh? All right. Okay, uh, majority, most of you are B. Yes. Yes, correct. The answer is correct. Right? The answer is B. The project management body of knowledge, the PIMBOK, right? is where uh, PMI have published. Uh, currently, is the sixth edition, and the seventh edition is uh, already drafted. I expect the uh, I expect it will be released maybe end of this year or early next year, right? So this pinball guide 
is a very influential material for the project management uh, fraternity. Right? So the uh, many industries now uh, use it as a, a guide, a standard to follow. Many organizations using it and to, to uh, so-called plan and introduce a project. Now, the next slide I'm going to talk about is the uh, PMI and the Malaysia chapter. Now, I'll give you a quick introduction. Who is this PMI and Malaysia chapter? Now, PMI has, um, is a, is a US-based uh, or, or organization. Now, the, uh, they has been around for 50 years now. The original, the previous logo is this logo at the bottom, the blue color logo, the PMI Institute. Now, last year, October, PMI have changed the logo. They have changed to this logo in the top here. It's a little bit different. I mean, the different, I mean, from the previous one, very uh, totally a uh, fresh uh, logo, right? So, some people say this is something that very uh, like cartoon, all right? Now, uh, they established 1969 in Venezuela, US, and then the website is PMI Technology. They, they project themselves as a non for profit organization and currently have more than um, 500,000 members, and almost 600,000 members worldwide. I think some of you in here tonight is definitely the, the also members of PMI, right? Um, they present the local chapters and there are more than, more than uh, I think more than 200 chapters worldwide, right? They provide professional certification and accreditations for the university or even colleges and school now. And the industry standard, they have many, many standards. Uh, Pinbox is one of the uh, uh, popular standards they have. They have the, the work breakdown structure, they have the risk management, uh, the schedule uh, management uh, standard. There are different types of standards they have in the market. Now, PMI have done a, a kind of a study of what are the most influential projects over the last 50 years, right? So I want to hear from all of you an open question. Which project have been the most influential to you over the last 50 years? Which project, right? There are many projects around uh, over the last 50 years, uh, half decade. I want to hear from you, what are the most influential projects? Maybe you can name one or two or three, and later on, I will, I will show it to you. Most influential. This is published by PMI. Can everyone, we can start writing what are the projects that are um, giving them very impactful over the last 50 years? You can you can indicate your answer in the live chat, the live comment. Which project, right? Maybe you can give some name or brief abbreviation. What kind of project that can give the, have that kind of um, influence over, over mankind, right? Anyone? He's trying to say, <laughs> okay, no idea. Uh, ABC is easy to answer than open question, right? Eh? Uh, okay, I saw uh, engine. Now, the next one is, uh, uh, I saw KLCC, all right? Project to battle COVID-19, all right, that's interesting, huh? all right? Then the second Benang Bridge, KLIA, or the Broughton, uh, this is a local project, huh? local influential project. But talk about influence in the world, maybe. We still have a gap, right? Okay. Mm. Renewable energy, green energy, or uh, twin tower. Yes, is uh, one of the one of the icon, right? Okay. Now, um, let me share with you. Let me share with you from what PMI have do a kind of a review and research worldwide. Which are the top uh, fifty projects that having the most influence in the world? Uh, I try to share this video so that I think everyone can see this video a little bit now. Okay. This one PMI, right? You can see this video on YouTube right now.
All right, so that is the 50 uh, influential project in the world. I, I, I put it into a, uh, I kept it under this, uh, I hope this slide can be easy for you to see more. That was very fast, the video, right? Now the I'm with Sunil Prashara, President and CEO of the Project yeah, Management Institute. Sunil, as part of Project Management Institute's renewal, you've launched a new focus oh, yeah, on yeah. what you're calling... Off this one. All right. Now, the uh, these are the top 50. Uh, you see the, the from start from the World Wide Web to the Apollo 11, the Intel, the, the chip the microprocessor, right? Okay, these are the global, uh, very big influence to mankind's projects. I mean, the reason here one of the Alexa, right? High, high, high rise building at Burj Khalifa, Walt Disney, and the Google search engine, right? Bitcoins, now this is a, the, the, the hot one in the recent years, right? The, uh, the Boeing plane, right? and the uh, others like Cosmos. Yeah. Wikipedia, online encyclopedia, Star Wars, and this Project Tiger, right? TGV's high speed train, and this has been many years already. Right? Khan Academic, the education services, and the very old one is a Sydney Opera House. So these are the top 50 that BMI have shortlisted and announced it last year in last October. Right? This influenced the whole world. Of course, I think now getting that's not I saw a good answer. A project whoever has found a solution, a vaccine for the COVID 19. Wow, that's another another great project that can really save the main time, right? Okay, now, um, now just give a quick introduction PMI Malaysia chapter. Maybe some of you are already a PMI Malaysia chapter member, some of you are may not, and I will um, encourage you to join. I would like to encourage you to join PMI Malaysia chapter if you, you, know, you can connect with them to continue learning. PMI Malaysia chapter has. In 1994, they have a group of volunteers and uh, currently have more than 1,004 members that they try to reach a target of 1,005 as a medium sized chapter. I mean, the, the goal is to uh, promote project management learning. And uh, they, they have people, team members, I mean, the so called the members of the diversified industry. All right. Now, question quiz, huh? quiz time. Media Mind has been around for how many years? Can you put an answer on the, on the live chat? A, B, or C, 10 years, 30 years, or 50 years? Can, can you quickly put your answer on the live chat? Let me take a look on the live chat and see uh, what is the answer that you put forward. How many years? Before the response on the, on the internet. Huh? PMA has been around for how many years? I'm waiting for the answer to show up. Um, Okay. Okay. Some say uh, thirty years, fifty years. Okay. I see or B or C. I so many B or C answer. All right. Okay. Continue. We have more answer comes up. All right. How many years PMI has been around? All right. This is a very, one of the very established um, uh, NGO. Uh, the learning society, right? Yeah, so they have a very precise answer 51 years. Okay, reaching 51 years, all right? Okay, good. Thank you for answering it. Now, the answer is 50 years. They have celebrated 50 years anniversary, and this year is towards 51 years, going to be 51 years. Um, they are, they are, I think they have not celebrated the 51 years anniversary yet, going to, going to, uh, after the maybe after the COVID 19 pandemic, uh, they will celebrate in the US. And now it's very hot. So I mean, they're very crucial moment they can't celebrate. Now, the next question, how many years PMI Malaysia chapter has been around? Is it 15 years, 20 years, or 25 years? Just to, anyone know about the answer? Okay, you can also type your answer on the on the chat, on the live chat, right? So how many years PMI Malaysia chapter has been around, right? So we are also have quite some years, okay? All right, some say it's a, uh, C, okay, all right, some say B, right? Let's continue to give your answer. 
something 15, something 25. All right, some is 15. Huh? So how many years is PMI Malaysia chapter has been around? All right, so the, we, we are one of the early chapters in, in the region, something in the region. So Malaysia chapter has been around for uh, quite some time. All right, so we're definitely more than 15 years. Okay, so the, uh, the, the answer is, Okay, the answer is, let me see whether you have some animal coming, coming up. Yeah, correct. Uh, Christine found in 1994, right? <laughs> yeah, Suling have a very precise, always a 26 year, going to, going to, going to 26. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your, for your answering. Yes, it's 25 years, already celebrated 25 anniversary last year. This year is moving two ways to be 26 years. Now, PMI have, the next thing I will talk about, PMI have eight types of certification um, that you can look into to get uh, certified. Some of you, I think most of you here could be already have holding one type of certifications. Now, um, the, the most popular one is the project management professional and the short form, they call it PMP. Now, PMP certification has been more than 20 years, right? Then the, the next, the second popular one is a CAT PAM. They call it a certified associate in project management, right? This is for the entry level um, project management uh, certification. The third popularity is the uh, the PMI Agile Certified Practitioner. This is another um, upcoming and uh, getting more and more people going to people work in the software industry, software related project, Agile. Now. Then um, they have others like Program Management Professional, Scheduling Professional, Risk Management Professional, Portfolio Management Professional. Uh, this one is the, the highest, but they have, have the last people certified and also the business analyst, right? Business analyst is uh, newly added in uh, about three, four years ago, right? The professional in business analyst now. Now, quick question. How many types of credential solution PMI have? Can you put your answer on the on, on, the, on the live chat to so quickly get your feedback? Maybe you get a correct answer. How many types of credential solutions PMI are offering to the industry? Okay, let's see the answer. I'm asking you to lead you, get you engaged in, uh, in this evening's uh, uh, sharing. How many times? All right, I wait for the answer to show up. All right, most of you say B. All right, good, very good. <laughs> oh, you are uh, actually listening to my talk very well. Thank you, thank you. The answer is correct. The answer is eight times. Uh -huh. Okay, eight times. Okay, now. What is the benefit? I just want to reinforce that this PMP is something that uh, most people go forward to. Now, um, the, the key point is that this, this certification is recognized in worldwide, recognized in more than 200 countries in the world, right? A certified PMP will show that, showing that you have the right skill, you have that confirmed assured skill and experience and knowledge and competency of managing projects. So the employer pay a very high uh, regard to the Certified PMP and even the customer, if you're handling a project for your client and yeah, you're a certified PMP, it do add value. It's a, they give a peace of mind to them, right? But as an individual, as you say in this, as you've seen in the salary survey just now, a certified PMP have actually get higher pay than those non-certified, right? Now, how many certified PMP and globally now starting more than a million? Let's just break a million. Uh, record in a, in a couple of months back, right? So, and continue increasing. So, this is a, one of the big number, right? In terms of certification of PMP in the industry now. There are steps to get certified, right? So, I think for those already certified, uh, I, I will just run through this, right? So, the course, the minimum education requirement to be certified in PMP is a di diploma holder, right? If you don't have a diploma, you may not be able to. Um, certified as a PMP, right? And you need to have at least 30 uh, project management experience, working experience, project management environment, at least 36 months or, or at the same time, 4,500 hours. And uh, the first step is you must attend the project management education training for minimum 35 hours, minimum, right? So to complete your qualification to, to allow to sit for the PMP exam. And once you are allowed to uh, sit for an exam, you, of course you have to apply. You need to apply and get approval from PMI and pro approval, then only you can take the exam, right? The exam is now able to take online, right? It used to be in the physical classroom, but now you're able to take online 
from the 15th of April onwards, I think uh, two weeks ago, uh, PMI announced you can take the exam online. So that's a good thing. But they are, of course, they, in, they, they have introduced, they have in, uh, uh, term and condition that to follow. Uh, quite stringent if you want to take the exam at home. Okay. Now, of course, um, before the, you go forward for the exam, you can attend our four days PMB bootcamp. Right. So um, during this uh, MCO period, we have run a few uh, PMP uh, live online training. So uh, people have attended and it's continued to we will continue to help people to get this certification. So this is a very exciting exam. It's one of the top exams in the world, right? Of course, the, the, the past exam required a very good uh, preparations and, and deep down study, right? But don't worry, we have the very uh, so-called uh, proven uh, study methodology to help you to pass a PMP exam. Now, that's in the summary. Uh, this PMP, uh, you need to be... Uh, the qualification to go for this minimum is a diploma holder. Diploma holder need to have more than uh, seven thousand five hundred hours in terms of uh, involved in project, right? You may not be a uh, necessary to be a project manager, uh, but you have to be a project leader at least, and maybe in one of project. I mean, the job title may not be a project manager, but the, the role, the role maybe in one or two projects, your role is a project manager. Even though it's a small project, then you'll be qualified to take this uh, PMP certification. And uh, if you're a degree holder, of course, you, you need a shorter hours of 4,500 hours right? and 36 months of a, a kind of a project management in, uh, involvement. Compared to diploma holder, you need 60 months, right? it's longer. Okay? But both need to have 35 hours of project management education hours. Now, our PMP bootcamp is qualified for 38 hours. Later, I will talk a bit more on that. Now, let's quickly recap. recap right? I'll ask you a question. What is PMP means? A, project management professional. B, project management practitioner. C, project management plan. Okay. Can you answer quickly in the live chat? Is it A, B, or C? Yeah? What is mean by PMP? Okay. Let's take a look on the answer. All right. I see answer A and B. All right, mostly answer is A. All right, continue to answer. Some say B, oh, okay, between A and B. Anyone say C? All right, okay, okay. All right, so we have mixture of A and B answer, all right? So the, okay, okay. Now, I, I the, the, the answer is B, project management uh, professional. Project by A is sorry, is the A answer is a project management professional. B is project management practitioner, right? It's another layman term. Now, answer is a project management professional, right? So this PMP is then for that. Now uh, we have this for this uh, PMP bootcamp that we are running to every month, even during the MCU period. This month we actually have run two sessions on the live online PMP bootcamp. Um, we're still giving money back guarantee for those who attend our PMP bootcamp. And the additional thing is like those attended our live online PMP bootcamp during the MCO period, you're entitled to attend the face-to-face -face session free for one session. So you have a peace of mind, right? So this, that's the reason we, we, we still have people um, very interested to join and during this MCO period, rest you can learn from home, right? So we use a live online approach to teach this PMP and people still feel that uh, it's almost equivalent to the live sessions. Those is something that um, we continue value adds to that. Now, these are the sessions that we are having right, for this month and also next month. We will see how is the MCO uh, going on or not. And even I think after the MCO is lifted, the, the social distancing will still have to be obeyed. And the training, face-to-face um, -face training, may not be that soon that, um, to, be, to be resumed. Right? So this is something um, in the interim we would like to continue that. And I would say, some of you, if you still need to work from home and, and you want to continue study and prepare your PMP, that could be a good timing. So to, to inform um, colleagues and friends who are now, who are so-called during this uh, partial lockdown, you can you can go forward to the PMP certification, a PMP training as well, right? We call it a live online PMP training. And as I say just now, you sign up and attend the live online PMP training and you get a free face-to-face -face session 
right after the MCO is lifted. Okay. On top of that, if you introduce friends to join our PMP training, of course you will reward you reward 168 ringgit per pack. Right. So we recommend we recommend people to join this uh, world recognized certification uh, course. Right. So I hope look forward to have more now. Uh, we do have other events that relate to project management. Uh, for example, we have the managing virtual workplace. We have a free talk tonight, and then we we also giving uh, for those attend our PMP training. The good thing is they can attend our free revision session. We have a regular free revision PMP revision sessions this Friday and Saturday. Uh, the afternoon we're going to have uh, another sessions of free revision. Since uh, MCO until now, we have done more than four three or four sessions already for revisions for people to continue uh, refresh before they go and take the PMP exam, right? Now, we also have a new add-in is the PMP bootcamp preview session, which is a free seminar to let participants to uh, really come to experience the actual learning in the live online PMP bootcamp, to have a confidence. I mean, we let you have a one hour, a one hour class of attending this uh, PMP training live, right? So it's going to be on this Saturday, three to 4 p.m. and you can experience the that, but pre-registration is required for all these uh, free events, or uh, free talk, or free revision, or free seminars. All right now, on the uh, 12th of May, we are going to have another free talk on the Lean Six Sigma, right? Lean Sigma, uh, Lean Six Sigma programs, a talk uh, given by my uh, uh, super trainers. He's very experienced. I mean, talk about how to learn about this Lean Six Sigma approach to. Uh, Deal with the challenges that we have in the pandemic now. Um, we do have online, live online, the project risk management module on the 15 and 16. And uh, even we have the other live online module on the leading safe bootcamp and uh, agile project management in the nutshell on the 22nd May is another free talk uh, that you all are welcome to join. It's in the evening free talk. And we also, in June, we also have the program management management Program Mission Professional Bootcamp. And this is a, a level up after the PMP Bootcamp. And for those who are really keen to um, so proud to go forward to uh, get another level of uh, certification after PMP, now this is a good opportunity. This is a, uh, a three days uh, certification uh, live online. So we have a speaker who will conduct these sessions. Depends on how the MCU is going on. I predict they may be still not allowed to have the face to face at that moment. So we're still putting it. Um, a live online at the moment, right? So you can inquire with Sharin on, and this is a handphone number and an email address, and she will give you more information about the upcoming program. All right, so a little bit marketing, and I hope you can share the information with others. Now, quiz again, how many certified PMP in the world? Is it A, 10,000, B, 100,000, C, 1 million? Okay, you can put your answer in the live chat now. How many certified PMP in the world now at the moment? How many of them? Okay, can you put the answer? Okay, I wait for the answer to show up. At this moment, worldwide, whole world, how many certified PMP? Okay, I wait for the answer. The, 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 the stream yard to be refreshed. All right, how many certified PMP in the world? Let me wait for the answer to come out. Huh? You can key in your answer. Okay, my, my browser have not refreshed it. Okay, I saw answer uh, C, majority say C. All right, and some say B. Okay. Oh, we have B and C. C, majority says C. Right? I did mention the answer just now. I did mention it in my presentation just now. All right, so we have a mixture of answers. Now, the, uh, the answer is uh, C, all right? We have more than a million, slightly more than a million of certified PMP in the world, all right? Of course, still less than the PhD we have in the world, or maybe I still, I guess still, okay? Now, that is the whole world number of certified PMP in the whole world. How about Malaysia? How many certified PMP in Malaysia? Okay, but it's another quiz that I'm asking you. You can put your answer in the live chat. Is it 2,000? Is it 4,000? Is it 8,000, right? 
Malaysia have the, the PMB certification holder is not that much yet comparatively to the PhD we have. Okay, now let's put your answer on the live chat. How many certified PMP in Malaysia now? All right, let's see the answer. Okay, I'll wait for a while for the for the answer to show up. How many certified PMP in Malaysia at the moment? Okay. Okay, I just wait for the answer to show up. Huh? Uh, okay, I see some answer really coming in. All right, so uh, some say, some say it's a uh, A, some say B, okay, and some say C, all right. Okay. How many certified? I mean that, okay, mixture of A and, a and B, eh? all right, okay. And some, one or two say C, all right, so is it 2,000? 4,000 or is it 8,000, right? So now the, the answer is we have four close to 4,000. We have about 4,000 certified PMP in Malaysia, whole Malaysia, right? And I mean, and those are really past the exam. So still very low number compared to our neighbor Singapore, right? Singapore have three times more than Malaysia in terms of certified PMP. They have 11, 12,000 certified PMP, right? So I hope this gives you a number. Now, yes. For those who have not gotten a BMP, that's not too late. I mean, it's still, if the number is still low. I mean, just China alone, they have more than 100,000 certified PMP, right? So this is a big cloud now. Now, let's give you an idea of the, those for those are a young project executive and uh, they graduate, they work on a project. The CAPPEM is an entry level certification. Of course, this exam, you can take it online, right? So CAPPEM is the requirement is very, uh, you just need to have a diploma, right? And with the minimum hours of a uh, quite minimum hours of uh, education for management, we have two or three days, a three day sessions that you can qualify to take the CAPTEM exam. It's quite easy to fulfill, right? Then the other one is called ACP, uh, the Agile Certified Practitioner. Now, this ACP can also take online, right? The exam can be also take online, and the uh, they have uh, they they require to have a project management experience. Um, 2,000 hours on general project experience, and then uh, another 1,500 hours of agile project experience. I mean, you are involved in the agile, like incremental or iterative, then you are about, this is about a year, about, about 10, eight to ten, eight, eight, eight months to 12 months of uh, kind of experience in, involved in the agile. Uh, you need to have a minimum, is a di diploma as well, right? And you need to have attended a project management education hours of uh, 21 hours that related to a job, right? So this is a third popular certification uh, in PMI. So I will encourage you to go certify as well, right? The agile tools and technique is now the so-called the, uh, the framework. It's quite interesting and is blended into the traditional waterfall. I mean, in terms of agile, we talk about flexibility, right? We talk about versatility, okay? now. Um, the other one you can consider to move forward is a program management profession. Now, this is something that um, another level up after the PMP certification. Now, for 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 the uh, degree holder, right after the uh, you have a degree and uh, you need to show the PMI of six thousand hours of project management experience and plus another six thousand hours of program management. This is really um, basically you need more than eight years, right? Definitely for people who are a PGMP, you have more than eight years of involved in project or even program management. Right? So this is a more a more stringent um, than the PMP certifications, right? So not many certified PGMP in the whole world. Yeah, I mean, it's only about thousand plus, right? So this is something that I I I, I encourage you. While the PMP certified, you can go forward to get this PGMP. If if you, if you are qualified for the next one, it's called the PFMP. You can go forward as well, but the one is very very difficult to get. You have to go through a, a proper interview, right? Not just an exam. It's quite quite uh, stringent. The PMI control the PFMP. The PGMP is alright. You can go for the exam. Now, question. Alright, the quiz. I want to answer now. What is the minimum months of project experience required for the PMP exam? A. Twelve months. B. Twenty four months. C. Thirty six months. So okay. 
you can put the answer on the live chat. Right? So you want to you need to recap how many months of project management experience required um, minimum, right? To for a degree holder, especially for a degree holder, to uh, I, I think emphasize as a degree holder uh, to be qualified to take the PMD exam. Okay, you can put your answer on the live chat. Let's see. Is it 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months? What is the minimum uh, months of project management experience? All right, I wait for the answer to show up in the live chat. All right, so some, most of, some of you say B, some of you say C. Okay. <laughs> Mixture of B and C, yeah? so see which one is the most okay. Majority still say B, C, C, yeah? okay. Some say B, right? What is the minimum, all right, for the uh, degree holder, degree holder yeah? to, to qualify to take a PMD exam? All right, so I saw uh, quite a number of you have given your answer. Thank you for giving the answer. Now, yes, correct. The minimum is. 36 months. You need to show 36 months of project management experience in order to qualify to take the PMD exam. I mean, um, you may not need to be a project manager title on the job, right? This is, but you need to be show the PMI that you have 36 months of project involvement experience, right? Now, that leads lead to another question. Now, what is the minimum project management education hours required? On top of the, uh, the, the, the 36 month, what is the minimum project management hours required for PMP exam? How many hours? This is another requirement huh? you must fulfill, right? A, 21 hours, B, 35 hours, and C is 49 hours. So which one? Okay, I want you to put your answer in the live chat, right? This is true. <laughs> for those who already got a PMP, hopefully you still remember. Huh? For well, those are fresh or new or never been, not, not PMP yet, yeah, this is could be like something that you can ponder. Okay, now, put your answer on the live chat now. All right, I saw answer coming up. Uh, some say A, some say, a lot, of them, a lot of you say B. All right, many of you say B, in fact. Huh? Okay, some say A, all right. Okay, a few of you say A. Right? Okay, good. So I think correct. The answer is a. Uh, the answer is a. Uh, thank you for the feedback. The answer is B. Thirty-five hours minimum. Thirty-five hours to qualify to take the PMP exam and the project management training that you attended. The PMP training conducted by Career Group, you will you will get thirty-eight hours. Three hour extra, you get 38 hours for our career group PMP boot camp. So it's more than what is required, right? So this is something that bonus. Okay. Now, next, how many hours for the PMP exam, right? Now, for those who already taken an exam, you will straight away know the answer. But those don't know, yes, you can. Is it two hours, three hours, or four hours, right? You can put the answer on the live chat. How many hours for the PMP exam? Now, even you do it online now. Uh, in, the, in in your home and also in the test center they are the same hours to be to be, to be um, consistent right so the, the test center of course at this moment you can't access right okay put your answer on the live chat how many hours for the PMP exam let's see the answer going up all right many people say C one of you say A okay Answer continues to show up. All right. Okay. Christine, your first experience is four hours, huh? Yes. Fully occupied, right? <laughs> fully occupied. Most people will fully use up the four hours. Yes, the answer is correct. See, four hours, four hours non-stop. Right? Of course, you can take a break in between, but the clock is still ticking. So make sure you're able to click the submit button at the end of the four hour exam. So the exam is four hours, right? Still four hours. But in the now the new live online, the so-called online uh, at home uh, PMP exam online, um, they do have a break time in between. Uh, in two hours time, they have 15 minutes break, but uh, they don't allow you to change your answer for the first two hours. Uh, that is the only setback on the, uh, the exam online at home, right? So this is 
compared to the test center, you still can change your answer, what you answer in the first two hours. But this, the new new requirement for, for those who are sitting exam at home, you are now allowed to change. Now, the next question is, how many multiple choice questions in the PMP exam? Uh, those already at, attended the exam, you may know. Is it A, 100, B, 200, C, 300? So how many questions you have for the PMP exam? All right, it's a multiple choice question, right? So it, it, you have a, each question has four choice, right? But how many questions? I mean, four hour exam is really challenging, but how many questions you have to answer? Okay, you can put the answer on the live chat now, all right? Okay, I'm waiting for the answer, waiting for the answer to show up. All right, many of you say B, some say C, no, I see it's right. All right, the majority say B. Okay. One or two of you say C. <laughs> okay. So is it 100, 200, or 400? Right. Okay. All right. Okay, good. All right. I think most of you say uh, 200. Yes, correct. The answer is correct. Thank you. Thank you for your, in for your feedback. And that's true. Still 200. Even the new. Exam, uh, I think PMI is still keeping it 200. Uh, they, they expect to change by early next year. They have postponed the change of the exam question style. Um, it originally was end of December last year, and then they postponed it to end of June this year. With the COVID 19 pandemic, they further postponed it to end of December this year. All right, for those who have not taken the PMP exam this, uh, this year, or even last year who attended a PMP course, you can quickly prepare and take the exam before end of December, right? So, um, and now you can choose to do the online. Now, now this is I actually giving you the answer already. Does PMP exam available online? You can put the answer yes or no. Can you take the exam online? I mean, at your home, okay? So put the answer on the, on the live chat. You can put yes or no or one or two, okay? Can you take the PMP exam online? I saw yes. Some say no, huh? <laughs> B, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I think most of you say yes, right? Yes, it can be. Now, PMP exam, I mentioned just now, we can take online, right? But there's, the requirement is more stringent. The requirement is more stringent to take a PMP online. They do not allow you to. Um, do any writing on the paper or pencil. You can't have even have a handheld calculator. Everything is in the, on, on the screen, right? And they give you a, a, a screen, a whiteboard to write or do any drafting. It's not easy. It's not easy to use. You have to be prepared if you're doing the, you plan to take the PMP exam online on your home. That is the challenge that you have to face now. But still can if you're if you're familiar with the, the tools now. Now, the next question I want to ask all of you is to answer another quiz. Does one need to be a, a job title um, project manager that only can uh, take the PMP exam? Is it yes or no? Is it only the person, the person with the project manager title and the job title, official job title, can only take the PMP exam? Okay, please answer in the live chat. All right? I want to hear your feedback. Is it yes or no? Okay, all right. I met many people say no. Right, I continue to hear the feedback. Okay, many say no. All right, very consistent. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. I think the everyone have the same answer. Test correct. You don't need to be a job title as a project manager to take a PMP exam, but your role, your role, you may be in one or two a project that you manage. Your role is have to be a project manager. Right, to really qualify and you need to walk through the five project management process group the five domains in, in among the project management experience that you report to pmi now another question that you may be forgotten how much is the exam fee for a pmp exam fee for some of you who are uh, taking the exam a couple years back hopefully you still remember the exam fee all right so a 205 us dollar b 405 us dollar and C, 605 years dollar. I'm talking about a PMP exam fee for member, for a PMI member. Which one? How much it costs now at the moment? 
Okay, you can put your answer on the live chat. All right, so I have many questions to keep you busy now. Okay, I'm waiting for the answer to show up. Is it A, B, or C? How much it costs? It's not a cheap exam, it's quite a uh, costly exam. Wow, I have a mixture of answer. Some say it's C, some say it's A, and some say it's B. All right, so we have three different answers. Now I saw on the live chat. Okay. All right, so I saw A, B, and also most of you say A and B, a few of you say C. All right. It's in US dollar. And if you convert to major ring, you have the times about 4.4. Uh, 4. And now, as of today, I train about 4.4, 4.5 if you pay by credit cards, right? All right. Okay. The answer is 405 US dollar. Answer is B, right? So we still maintain the same price. This price has been around for the last 10 years. PMI have not increased the price yet, right? I think there's a plan they may increase the price. So I hope they will still maintain or even reduce to get more people to go certified with PNP. Now, the other point I want to mention about is to maintain the certifications. The PMI, um, talk about this uh, PMI talent triangle, right? So the uh, as a certified PMP, you need to renew the license. You need to renew the license every three years. Right? After you've gotten a PMP certified, you need to get the PDO in this three uh, perspective. Uh, the first one is a technical project management skill, right? So that yeah, the technically, I mean, you have applied different tools and techniques to a project, right, from engineering and planning. I mean, some courses that we conduct, we have a, really, a lot of very hours on this technical project management skill, right? You know the step-by-step -step how project to be conducted. You know what tools to be used, right? You know how to apply the different checkpoints of project. Now, the second skill is the uh, important skill is the leadership, right? That was a soft skill, leadership skill, involved interpersonal communications. Emotional intelligence, um, uh, negotiations, influencing, right? Different type. We have facilitation skill or directing skill, leadership. This different type of leadership skill um, that you need to uh, continue to learn. And the, the, the third one is the strategy and business management. This is talk about um, how you strategize a project, right? How you align to the business goal, right? So make sure that the, the, the team members align and achieve the uh, project goals and this is very much um, expected as one of the important skills as a project manager. Now the minimum PDU on each of this area to renew a license is eight PDU. So every three year cycle you need to collect eight PDU on this technical project management eight PDU, leadership eight PDU and the strategy and business management eight PDU to, to, to in order to fulfill the, the requirements. So you have less than eight PDU on this area they may not allow you to renew the uh, PMP uh, license. Now, for, for example, for our PMP bootcamp, the career group PMP bootcamp, our uh, total is 38 hours. Um, we have we have the uh, 18 hours on the uh, technical project management skill area, 10 hours on leadership, and 10 hours on the strategy and business management. So if you short of these uh, hours and this triangle, to let us know, maybe you can attend a refresh course on the PMP, and then you can qualify for that. <laughs> Just a little bit of marketing. Right? Now, PMA have a, a membership, the collect membership, and uh, what is advantage? People are asking, well, I mean, is it, is it really to have to maintain the PMA membership to uh, so called to, to, to upkeep your PMP certification or not? The answer is no, right? PMA membership is optional, it's not a compulsory item that you need to maintain. Right. So, but of course, if you are PMI member, you of course you can you can enjoy a lot of benefits. Right. You can access to the library. You have you can have a networking. We got discount item for the books or the standards that you want to buy from PMI, the hard copy, or even attend some seminars, events. Even there are some career uh, professional development. You can put your resume in PMI uh, portal for the job uh, portal. Maybe if there's an employers. Uh, you can search your resume in there, right? So you can exchange ideas or networking with other uh, so-called uh, chapters or community. Right? There are different interest groups. You can, of course, there's a lot of a lot of networking opportunity, right? The PMI Malaysia chapter is continue promoting a lot of this uh, networking opportunity. I'm very active. 
and you can give back, you can be a volunteer to serve in the PMI um, globally or even in the chapters, right? there, are, there are platform. Of course, you have to uh, put in your resume in the, uh, the so-called the, the PMI website to, to show your interest and you, you look at the vacancy available. Now, how much is the membership fee? Uh, mem membership fee still is still the same. The PMI Global membership it costs about 129 US dollar, right? Annually, this is an annual membership fee in US dollar. First time you join PMI, you pay 10 US dollar extra as an application fee, right? So that's why the first time um, is 139 US dollar, right? Plus the, uh, because of the 10 dollar US dollar. Now, you can only join the PMI Manager chapter upon you. Um, um, a member of a global membership, right? So only you can join the PMI membership when you pay an additional 20 US dollar. And this 20 US dollar uh, is also an annual fee you pay, right? So PMI membership chapter do have uh, uh, some opening uh, or so called introductory membership for the chapter, which is free for a year. You can go and join the membership if you are you want to test out the membership chapter, how active they are. You can go ahead, right? This is and the US dollar you may can save for the first year, but subsequent year you have to pay. Now, this is a website of the PMI uh, Global and the, the ORG. Malaysia is dot mine, that's additional dot mine. This is the logo of the PMI Malaysia chapter, not the new logo and new logo of the global. All right, now, uh, okay, next question to you, this interesting question Does project manager need to be handsome or pretty? Right. So I want you to uh, put your answer on the live chat. It need to be someone who are gorgeous or pretty. Right? What do you think? I want to get the idea. Is it necessary? Is it compulsory? Is it a prerequisite? You must be a pretty or, or handsome. All right now. Okay, I want to hear your answer from the live chat. Yes or no? <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 the answer is no. Many of you say no, huh? all right? Or only one say yes, huh? <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, huh? Oh, so ring. You have the answer in between. You have okay. To do influence, right? If you're if you're if you're if you're gorgeous or you're you're, you're handsome or you're you're you you're pretty project manager. Okay, okay. All right, all right. You help on communication. I like that word. Okay, good. Thank you for your feedback. Thanks a lot. All right. Be smart. Huh? Okay. Now, the answer is no, right? It's not necessary. But as some of you say, yes, this is a, it's an advantage. It's an advantage, right? So it's an advantage to be uh, not, not, not a compulsory, not a prerequisite. It's not an a, a interview prerequisite requirement, but it's an advantage. Right? Some of you have mentioned it helps. <laughs> okay. Now, can a lady be a project manager? All right. Now, I know some of you already here. Right, so this is a straightforward answer. All right, so yes, the answer is definitely yes. I answered this for some of you here straight away. A lady can be a project manager, definitely. There's no doubt. There's no gender discrimination over here. I mean, this is, um, and I this lead to the another question that I wanted to answer. How many percent of project manager in Malaysia are ladies? All right. All right. Do you have any idea from the survey? How many percent of PMs are in Malaysia are, are ladies? Oh, they are, they are, they are women. They are female project managers. Is it 10%, 30%, or 50%? Okay, let's put your answer on the live chat. How many percent are they uh, project managers are, are, are females? Okay, now let's put your answer. Okay, some of you say A, right? Some of you say B. Wow. Some of you say C. Wow. We have a very, very diversified answer. <laughs> okay. How many percent is, is really relevant? I mean, for Malaysia. Okay. Now, okay. We have a mixture of answer here. All right. From range from 10, 30 to 50 percent. All right. So which one? Okay. Wow. Okay. Now. Malaysia, Malaysia is one of the country that um, I would say consider have the higher percentage of uh, ladies or uh, female project managers compared to the other part of the world, right? Um, most country in the world, most country in the world uh, having the range between uh, 90, 10 uh, and some are 80, 20, right? 
Malaysia is having the 70 30. Right? So that means Malaysia, the answer is B. Malaysia have about 30% of our project managers and ladies. I think getting more and more, uh, we should be proud of our ladies, uh, project managers. They are really capable, right? I, I saw a lot of, I came across, I met a lot, I knew a lot of uh, very capable project managers, ladies project managers in the industry, and they are holding a very senior position, quite a number of them, right? So congratulations to those who the ladies project managers. Huh? Don't underestimate the ladies project manager in Malaysia. We have a big group of them. Now, next question, all right? We are keep you thinking about the answer now of this uh, interactive sections now. Which industry require project managers? A, construction, B, oil and gas, C, manufacturing, D, all industry. Okay, quickly give an answer in the live chat. Which industry need to hire project managers, need project management? Okay, all right, so put an answer on the live chat and wait for the answer to show up. Which industry require project managers? Oh, all right, so I saw many answers, D, eh? all right. Oh, okay, very consistent. Everyone said D. All right, okay, no other answer. Perfect, all right, so very aligned. This is the one of the questions that you have almost 100% aligned. Okay, 100% aligned, correct. Now, all industry, actually all industry require a project management skill. So if you learn, you master the project management skill, you are certified holder in, in the project management, you can cross industry. You can cross in different industry. Whether you are currently working in the manufacturing, or you're in construction, you can cross over to oil and gas industry. Or if an oil and gas, you cross over to construction or even manufacturing or even other industry. So that's a good thing of this uh, project management certification. Well, PMI do recommend if you learn the pinball kind of knowledge, that is generally, generally for all projects, all project environment. So this is a very valuable uh, credential that you must look forward to, to get it. And that's something that is strongly advocate now. Quick question, I think for those who are already uh, certified and renewed, you know the answer. Now let's ask, how many years the PMP credential need to renew? Now, this PMP license is live, but you need to renew. But how often you need to renew? Okay, can you put your answer on the live chat? How many years you need to renew the PMP license? All right, so you get certified is one of the challenge, but after that you need to maintain, right? So how often you need to renew the, your PMP license? A, every year. B, every two years. C, every three years. Okay, put an answer on the live chat. All right, I saw answer is coming out. Uh, okay. Some say C, or some say no, all right? Uh, okay, I wait for the answer to come up more. How many years? We need to renew the license. This, uh, this license, of course, you need, don't need to take the exam anymore, but you need to renew. We need to accumulate 60 hours PDU to renew the license. All right? Okay, I see most of you are uh, showing your answer is C. All right? Continue. Uh, those are not answer, you can answer. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, I see most people answer is. Uh, C, no, correct. The, the answer is uh, C, every three years. But you do not need to take the exam anymore. You can just um, uh, collect the PDU, the credit hours in credit management, and then you can go forward for renewal. Renewal is straightforward. Lah. I mean, you after you, you just pay the, if you're a member of PMI, you pay 60 US dollar to renew. If you're a non-PMI member, you pay 150 US dollar. That's all, straightforward, all online. And the license you immediately issue to you uh, with a digital copy and also you receive a hard copy now does credential holder need to retake exam i already answered for you just now i think i, I think you don't need to take the exam right is uh you can straight away uh, renew the uh, with the enough pdu you can renew now if you lapse the three years duration and you didn't do any maintenance you didn't renew your license and you lapse the three years uh, okay in that situation you need to retake the exam Right, that scenario you need to retake exam if you if you lapse the three years, right? But I do I do 
help some people who, are, who lapse the three years to get the reinstate to become a PMP. But with a valid reason, uh, I do get some people to do that. Huh? So it's possible. PMI is quite a reasonable organization. If so happen, you 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 do not maintain it due to some reason, could be a health problem or others or family matters or others or work related matters. I can help you to justify, right? Okay, there's a way to do that. Right? No, I, I think this is something uh, interesting to, to know if you, in, you are in this situation, you to let me know privately. No, pinball guide. Now, I will talk about the knowledge in the pinball guide. Now, this pinball guide has been around, as I say, uh, more than 20 years. The current version is a uh, sixth edition, which is released in 2017, September 7 of September 2017, to be exact. PMI released a sixth edition. Um, the seventh edition is, I, I, as I said earlier, is on the way. Um, they are, they will be launching soon, right? This pinball card, um, every edition they increase the number of pages. The current pinball card they have about seven hundred over pages, getting thicker and thicker. I remember the first version of pinball card I read is a second edition, right? So I read through second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth now, right? The first edition is quite thin. Right now it's getting thicker and thicker. Now they in, it added in a one more booklet. It's called the Agile Practice Guide, uh, which sell together with the pinball guide, hard copy, or even a soft copy. Right now, let me ask you a question: How many process group in the in the project as per pinball guide? The process group is the phases, no? in a way, in the project life cycle. Is it three A or B four, and then? C five process. How many processes? So all right. Can you put your answer in the live chat? How many processes, process group in the project as for the pinball guide? How many stages or how many phases? I want to hear from you the answer. Okay, I, I'm, I'm seeing the answer coming in. Wait for the answer to come in. How many stages? Or how many? What is the project lives? How many project lives? What is the number of project life cycle in the in the, in the pinball guide you mentioned? From starting to the end, uh, how many phases? All right, I saw the answer. Most of you say C, and mentioned five. Okay, all right. Any other answer? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, okay, very consistent. All right. So I think most of you are involved in project. And you know the, the process group, you know the stages very well. Okay, good, good. So I think all having the same answer. The answer is C, right? Five phases. There are five uh, process group in the project management, uh, in the pinball guide. Now, five process group, 10 knowledge area, and 49 process. And they have more than 500 input tools and techniques and output as well. We, in the short form, we call it ITTO. Of course, this ITTO input tools and technique and output. Uh, a lot of them are repetitive in the 49 processes, right? So these 49 processes is, is something that um, become a guideline, a guidance for the project practitioner to lead the project. Now, later on, we will go through uh, in each of the knowledge area quickly to let you to have a good recap and, and, and after that, I'll share with you other information on project management train. Now, now, you know it's a five process group, right? Now, what are the process group in the project? Right? Can anyone give me the answer? Answer in the live chat. You know it's a five process group, right? What are the name of the five process group? Look at that. Look at the answer A, B, or C. Now I want you to quickly give me the answer in the live chat. What is the name of the five process group? All right. I hope this question is not so difficult. We have many questions for you tonight. Um, a lot of them are refreshed. Maybe some are new to you, but it's okay. I think you, you enjoy the, the interactions. Yeah. Now, let's take a look on the answer. Is it A, B, or C? Let's take a look. All right. I saw most of you say C. Okay. Any other answer? Wait for some more other, other answer. All right. So, very good. So most of you say is C. Okay. Pretty consistent. All right, okay, good. Now, yes, the answer is C, right? Initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, control, and closing. These are the five uh, 
project management life cycle, or we call it a five project management process group. The five domains that we go through, no matter how big and how small the project that you go, you will literally go through these five stages, right? Initiate plan, remote control, and closing. Now, that is the answer that we talk about. Now, um, if we put into the mapping, right, we we'll kick start the project. The project manager is typically assigned at this stage, and the team is formed at this stage. Then, after the the initiating stage, it may, may, may be very short, right? Depends on the complexity of project. Initiating stage may maybe a couple of days or the most maybe a week or two. That's all, right? Depends on the project size and complexity. About 5% to 7% of the time may be initiating a project. Then the second step is planning. Planning may be take a, a fair bit of the time of the entire project. It may take up to 25 to 30% of the time of the entire project. Right? So this, this is where the project team will work out the detailed plan for the project. Then followed by executing. Right? Executing is to get the work done. Right? This is where the implementation is come in place. Of course, in between, you do uh, merging control, right? And uh, to keep track of project progress. And the last thing is to close out the project. Of course, there are a lot of uh, communication, a lot of interface, a lot of uh, interaction between the stakeholders among these five process groups. Okay? Now, now, how many knowledge areas in the pinboard guide all right, for those who are PMP, a quick refresh. Huh? A, another quiz, huh? A, B, 10 knowledge area. All right. C, 12. So what is the answer? Can you quickly give your answer on the, on the live chat? How many knowledge area in the pinboard guide? All right. Let's see what is the response. A, B, or C. Now, wait for a response to come up. All right, I saw many people answer B. Wait for more questions to come up. Very good. You are paying very good attention to the to the tonight's uh, sharing. Oh, hundred percent say B. Eh? All right, okay, well done. Maybe I repeated many times or mentioned the, the, the answer. Ten knowledge area, right? Yes, it's B. Ten knowledge area. Pinball pack or ten knowledge area. So these are the the ten knowledge area. You need to master, you need to know the data, right? So from the integration to scope, schedule, cost, quality, resource, communication risk, procurement, and stakeholder management. Each of these areas, there are a few processes. Some have seven processes, some have three. So it's between three and seven processes, processes or steps on each of these knowledge areas, right? So we're going to look through in a short while, a quick one, to understand this 10 knowledge area. How do you how do you what do you mean by that? What is the things that should be done on these 10 rich areas? There's 49 processes. And how do you apply them? Are you applying all of them in your project? I may or may not, right? So you think about how to do that is 10 rich area. Now, you put into a diagram. I mean, the project management is supported by the four key pillars and five foundations. And uh, overall, is an integration. The four key pillars, I mean, start with the triple constraint, the scope, schedule, and cost, and including the quality as well. Then the five for being great resource, commission, risk management, procurement, and stakeholder. So these are in the graphical way I showed it how the 10 rich area is arranged. Now, um, the project management framework we will look into a, as a project manager, these are things that you must be very familiar. What is mean by project and what is mean by the project management perspective? Project is something that are unique, temporary and progressively elaborate. Project management is talking about the application of four things. You apply knowledge, skills, tools, and training to make the project happen. Now, and then we talk about the project constraint. There are top three constraints that limit the project performance. Right? So then we have to differentiate the project program portfolio. Some people are, are, are only manage one project at a time as a project manager, but some people manage multiple projects as a program manager, but some people manage project program, sub program, um, sub portfolio. Right, and even operation role. We call it portfolio managers. Okay. Now there are five process group. Definitely is you be have to be very familiar. I mean the project manager role or responsibility, we have to know about it. Right? Let's now talk about a pay mind talent triangle. Okay. We have to understand what kind of structure being used in the project management organization structure we use, right? Some may be using one, uh, some are used multiple types. Some is a mixture. 
right? You have to understand the organization process asset and the enterprise and manual factor. These are like common input that may disturb the project setup, right? The OPA and EF, good organization process asset and enterprise environmental factor. Who are the project stakeholders, right? There are two groups. Basically, they are internal external stakeholders and yeah, that you have to deal with, right? The framework will also look into the project and product life cycle of phases now. Okay, Chris, again, what are the top three constraints of a project? Right? For those are PMP, a, a bit quick refresh. For those not, okay, let's see whether, whether you get the right answer. A, money, people, the equipment. B, scope, schedule, and cost. C, quality, resources, and risk. Which, which are the top three constraints of the project? Okay, now put your answer on the live chat now. Is it A, B, or C? All right, let's look at the answer. And wait for the answer to come up. What are the top three constraints of the project right, that you are you are involving? Triple constraint. Some people call it triple constraint. Right? Okay, I saw most people mention B and uh, KG. You mentioned scope, schedule, and cost. All right. Okay. Let's see any other answer. Oh, very good. Very consistent. Huh? All having the same answer. Any other answer? All right. Okay, well done. Yes, the answer is a scope, schedule, and cost, right? These are the top three constraints. And every project manager who manages project must focus. Scope is the specification, the boundary condition of the project, all right? So what are the requirements to be fulfilled? Now, schedule is talk about deadline, the milestone, uh, the, the, the due date, you want to achieve or the, the different phases of the project. Cost, that link to the budget, right? The budget that required to... Uh, allowed to spend for the project, right? And, and from the cost perspective, we also look into the earned value, right? How much you had, your work done against uh, what the value of achieved in the project. Now, of course, on top of that, we do have other 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 constraints, which is the uh, quality, resource, and risk, right? So these are the other three constraints on top of triple constraint that project manager we have to juggle around. So achieve high quality and has sufficient resources. And, and able to manage and control and monitor risk is something that you have to be really uh, tip top. Now, that leads to the triple constraint that we have to focus the scope, schedule, and cost. And this is, is it easy to achieve the scope, schedule, and cost perfectly in your project? Right? In your, in your existing project? All right? So the answer could be yes or no, right? It's so not easy. It's just, to be the matter of fact, to achieve scope, schedule, and cost perfectly in your project. It's not easy. It's a lot of work, a lot of challenges to deal with now. Now, some organization may practice project management using a functional structure. Functional structure means what well, the coordination of project is in this level, in the department head level. Maybe one of the department uh, uh, leader will lead the project team in the part-time basis assigned by the CEO or the managing director or GM or VP, right? With team member, maybe from his or her department and also from other departments. So functional origin structure in terms of project management is commonly still commonly practiced in the industry, right? The other type is the project type structure. I mean, this kind of structure is also uh, practiced in some industry, but maybe not all. I think in the oil and gas and the construction industry do practice a lot in the project type structure, whereby the team members are who are involved in the project A, for example, is full time report to the project manager A. You don't report to any function manager. I mean, this is a very dedicated resource. Of course, we, we love to have this kind of a dedicated resource project or chart that we can be uh, focused and no disturb. But in reality, in the real book environment, especially in a, a shared resource organizations, you hardly can have a dedicated resource to run the project. Most of the time, you have to share resource. And when you share resource, there is a lot of challenges. Right? People are not able to focus on the deliverables that has been agreed. Uh, this is challenges. Now, that leads to the next one is called metrics, the shared resource organization structure. Now, many organizations nowadays practice uh, metrics. They are weak, balanced, and strong metrics. This example here showing is a strong metric. Strong metrics, the characteristic of strong metrics that is a project management department, or we call it a project management office. I mean, they are project 
a program directors who, or project or program senior manager who lead this department with a group of project managers underneath, right? So to, and also they have other admin staff. They have a project scheduler or maybe even a project document control people, project admin, project exec, etc. So they have their own project club, etc. So each of the project manager may lead the cross functional team, right? And uh, the different, different, different project. I mean, the project or program manager here, some of them maybe have one or two or even up to two or four projects. Depends on the size and of the project. Now, metrics. Metrics, I believe most of you may be involved in metrics. Now, project may be having this kind of a, a phases or we call it life cycle. Now, we kickstart the project, uh, work out a detailed plan and execute the project and then closing. In between is where you keep track of the work progress, right? Monitoring control process to be in reality, you cut across the planning as you monitoring control and closing. Some projects have more complicated than multiple phases, right? Here showing a design and construct or design and build phase. Some have a feasibility study, design, procurement, construct, test, commissioning, handover. Each of the phase is a, is a life cycle. It depends on complexity. Now, next question. Who shall define the role and responsibility of the project manager? Oh, this is a really big cap. Uh, PM question we asked before. Who's to define this role of the PM? A, the customer. B, project team. C, sponsor. Who is the one who is responsible to do so? Okay, you can put your answer on the live chat. Is it A, B, or C? Uh, the customer, project team, or sponsor? Okay, now let's put our answer on the live chat. All right, so I see answer is coming up. Uh, most of you say C, one of you say A. Any other answer? I'm waiting for more answer to come up. Huh? Well, some say A, huh? all right. Mm, some say C. Okay, the most of the answer is between A and C, but majority are C. Okay, who should define the or who should be responsible define the role of the project manager? Now, the answer is uh, C. Yeah, most of you are correct. Sponsor. The project sponsor. The project sponsor could be um, someone in the senior management level. The project manager boss is, is the one that who uh, assign the project managers, right? the project sponsor. And uh, a sponsor is the one that will be a bit, a bit accountable, accountable for a project outcome. Right? He will be the one who issue the project charter right, to the project. Uh, to formally authorize the project managers. Okay, now, okay, this is the next question. This is the next question. Who should be responsible for the project? Who? Is it a sponsor or the project manager or the or the project stakeholder? All right, so who should be responsible? Okay, I want you, I want you to put your answer on the, on the live chat. Who should be responsible for the project? Outcome, for example. Okay, put your answer on the live chat now. I'll wait for the answer to show up. Huh? Who should be responsible for the project uh, outcome? Okay, I saw mixture of answer. Some say B, some say C. All right, mixture of answer B and C. Who should be responsible for the project? <laughs> okay. Is it the is it the customer or sponsor or everyone, right? Who should be responsible? Wow! Well, right, this time many people choose B. Huh? All right. Okay. So, is it the project manager alone responsible for the project um, outcome? No. Not, not project manager alone, it's all the project stakeholders, right? Of course, the project manager is leading it or championing it, but the responsible is everyone. Right? Everyone must contribute uh, from the top to middle to lower level. Everyone must contribute to the project uh, outcome to make the project successful. Responsibility is all project stakeholders. The answer should be C, all project stakeholders, not just the project manager alone. 
All right. Now, let's quickly look into the refresh for those uh, the team broker knowledge area. This is going to the 49 process now. Project integration, we look into seven steps. Now, these seven steps, including uh, start with the project charter, and this is where the project manager is officially assigned. And with that, the project manager will go and lead and form the team. Uh, in the initiating team with the, with the project charter, they form the team. You identify the relevant stakeholder uh, to recruit the team members or project team to the project. And after that, they will start to have meeting, and that they will have to develop the project management plan. The project management plan will take a while to generate. This is one of the comprehensive documents of project manager you have to coordinate to come up the the base tone, the baseline for the project, right? Before we go and uh, execute the project, which is a step three, right? This is where direct and manage project is where the physical work or project could be done. And the deliverable is the main output from this direct and project work process, right? But at the same time, the, we need to capture or to retain the knowledge to gain in the projects, right? You may have to do a lot knowledge management or information management. We need to capture the lessons, the good or bad lessons we learn. We continue to gain new knowledge in the project, or you need to acquire new knowledge right, from this uh, uh, executing stage. Then after that, Monitoring control. I mean, they have to keep track of project progress to ensure the project is heading to the right direction, meeting the scope schedule and cost. Uh, monitoring control. At the same time, you may have changes will be arise on the project, and you hand you need to deal with the change management process. The PMI call it a, a PICC is perform into change control. I mean, you may have this a change management process. And it, if it's a major change, I mean, the important change you have to go through a CCB. A change control board, right? The change control board is a steering committee that will be um, helping to uh, review, it. will be in charge and the approve or reject the change. So PICC is something that um, we do a lot in the in the in the real project, and this is where the challenges comes in. Sometimes the change is very complicated, and the changes is it is in the in at a stage is very limited time. And limited budget, right? And the last step is to close on the project and phase, right? So integration is when the work is done properly, we have to end it. But preferably, you end phase by phase before we end the entire project. That is a good practice in terms of project integration management, right? So the key input to develop project charter may be the statement of work, the business case, or they call it a business document, and so the benefit management plan, the agreements. Uh, the EEF and even the OPA, right? And the, char the charter will be fed fit into the different um, knowledge areas planning, okay? Now, just to recap, what is inside the PMP? The PMP consists of all the subsidiary plan from different knowledge areas, including scope, schedule, cost, quality, resource, communication risk, procurement, and stakeholder, and include the baseline. What are the top three baseline? Which is a scope, schedule, and cost baseline, plus other component, which are also part of the PMP. The PMP is a master plan of the project. So the project manager typically spend a lot of time to uh, align the team member to come on this PMP, All right? So now, question. Lessons learned should be captured in which phase of the project management process? A, closing. B, monitoring, controlling. C, planning. All right, so this is a kind of refresh for the PMP. Now, can you put your answer on the, on, the, on the live chat? Is it A, B, or C? Okay, let me look at the answer, see which one is, what is the answer you indicate. Lessons learned should be captured in which uh, process group or which phase, which life cycle. Oh, I'll see a mixture of the answer. All right, some of you um, say B. So you see, C. Okay, let's wait for more answer to come up. Huh? Lesson learned. Which stage to capture lesson learned? Can you put an answer? Okay, continue to put the answer. I'll wait for the answer to come up. Huh? You know what I mean by lesson learned, right? What are the good things and the bad things you found in the project? Lesson could be good or bad lessons learned, right? So, which stage we should we capture? Right, okay. Uh, KG mentioned closing, all right. 
All right, most of you say B. Okay. Any other answer? Okay, Christine is say B. All right. Any other option? Lessons done. Where should we capture lesson? When, right? In which stage of the project management process should we capture lessons learned? All right. So I think most of you say B. Answer is correct. No, not correct. Huh? Answer is a uh, A. Closing. All right. Closing. Answer is closing towards the end. Right? You capture lessons learned. You must record it in the closing stage of the day. Of course, along the way you may start to do some recording, but to really uh capture and present it is at the closing stage, right? Before releasing the team to other project, closing, right? So lesson learned should be captured in the closing stage of the project. Eh? Okay, now, what is meant by WPS, these three words? Um, short form, eh? what is meant by WPS? A, what best service? B, work best system? C, work breakdown structure? Uh, it's a refresh for PMP. Uh, what is mean by WPS? Okay, I want you to quickly put your answer on the live chat. What is mean by WPS? All right, so I saw many, many answers coming up. Most of you say C. Okay, all right, so very consistent. Everyone says C. Any other answer? WPS. This is one of the important um, items in the project management process. Every project, you must have a WPS. It's the compulsory item. And it, it must be developed by a team, not just a project manager alone. Right. So very good. I have a very consistent answer for this WPS. Yes, correct. WPS stands for the work breakdown structure. Right. And the WPS consists of all the work package. There are three layers, at least three layers in the work breakdown structure. The top layer is a control account, then followed by the uh, planning package, then followed by the lower level is a work package. You may have multiple planning package, depends on the complexity of project, right? To, to, to identify more detailed work to be done on the project. Now, next question. The PPS is developed in which project management process group? A, initiating, B, planning, C executing. All right, so I want you to put an answer on the on the live chat. Under which process group we develop the work breakdown structure? Okay, I want to see. Uh, I want to hear your answer. Could you put your answer on the live chat? Okay, wait for an answer to show up. Huh? WBS is developed in which stage or which process group? A, B, or C? Uh, I wait for the answer to show up. Huh? All right, I saw many people say B. Okay, any other answer? Work breakdown structure is developed in which project management process? All right, yeah. KG, you mentioned planning, B planning. All right, or oh, Barov say C. <laughs> okay, all right, any other question? Any other answer? Yeah. Okay, now, yes, most of you having the, or, or most, almost 99% of you saying is a B, no, correct. The answer is correct, uh, it's planning. Planning stage, we develop the work breakdown structure, right? Uh, executing stage, we will uh, carry out the work that we have planned, right? Now, that leads to us to the next knowledge area, which is the scope management. Scope management has six steps, right? The strategize, the scope, how you're going to cut the scope of the project followed by collect the requirements, frame up the requirement, we call it define scope, and then you create a work breakdown structure, validate scope, followed by control scope. That's where we keep track now. The, the flow of the uh, how this uh, practice in the, the direct management project work, we have the deliverables, then we will need to make sure the quality is fulfill the expectations, validate the deliverables, then validate the scope is to be uh, accept or reject the scope. And then the last thing is, if everything is in good order, you close the project or phase, right? Now, I go through a bit more faster. On the third knowledge area is about schedule, right? 
uh, also have six steps in project schedule management. Start to strategize the scheduling, management process. I mean, what uh, what kind of tools, what kind of measure, what kind of and uh, what kind of units, what kind of measurements used for scheduling? Then you define the required activity from the work package. You sequence them, and at the same time, you you estimate them, and you form up the schedule, and then you control the schedule. You put it into the flow chart. That will be the sequence of how the schedule, the schedule management, will look like. Right? Strategize, you define, you sequence, you develop, and then you control. Right? There are some calculation I, I won't go through in detail to measure the the duration of the project using the triangular of data distributions, or look on the standard deviation or variance, or using the per, per calculation. We also look into the critical path measurements, look at the free float or free slack, look at the total float or total slack and the project fruit of, as an overall, right? Now, these are some of the measurements. We use it for the uh, calculation on the project uh, duration. What's been by CPM, right? This is another jargon, another, another application used in the project management world. A, critical process method. B, critical path method. C, critical plan method. All right, so I want to hear your answer. Can you put an answer on the live chat? Is it A, B, or C? What is meant by CBM? Okay. See anyone answering now? Okay, people are start answering. All right. Some uh, a lot of you say B. Okay. Any other answer? All right. What is meant by CBM? Okay. Hmm. I see a very consistent answer on this. Now, yes, it's correct. Right? The answer is critical path method. Right? Critical path methods we help us to uh, analyze the project schedule. Now, this example of a critical path method, we have very simple project. Right? So we do a forward pass to to work out the early start, early finish, and the backward pass to work out the late start, late finish. Then we see where is our project constraint, where is the critical activities, which are non-critical activities. How do we use a uh, non critical activity to try to help on the critical activities. And those are the uh, analysis that the project manager must be able to well worth to use the project schedule. Where is our limitation and how to free that limitation? Where is the resource control? Sometimes the resource maybe um, you have only you have a lot of scarce resource in the project. Now scarce resource means you only have one person can do the job. That is always a bottleneck for many many projects that cause a delay in the project management process. And you have to quickly align this scarce resource to the critical activity as soon as possible. All right now, uh, move on. And then the next one on the knowledge area is a project cost management. Project cost management has four steps. Talk about the uh, first one is to strategize how the cost of the project management recipe. It may be the way you measure the units in use, right? And then which area of cost you should count. Mostly costs relate to the resources, right? And you, you estimate costs relate to the how much resource, both human resource and physical resource in the project. And then you have to determine the budget after you have counted and then you control. There's some measurement of working out the budget, right? So they roll up from the uh, activity cost to the work package cost to the control account. Is made, control account is basically a cost center and then to the cost baseline. Cost baseline, of course, uh, inclusive uh, some quantity reserve, quantity reserve is uh, account for those known unknown risks, uh, the risk that may or may not happen in the project, but it's known happened in previously. And then on top of that, we will put some management reserve, which is for the unknown unknown risk, unforeseen. Like the COVID nineteen is unknown unknown risk. Nobody know this. This COVID nineteen pandemic is so huge that can cause the whole world stop for a while stop for a while for a couple of weeks or months right so this is management reserve if it's there may not enough money to do this kind of uh, unforeseen circumstances right you do with that now now the next terminology what is evm what is mean by evm a earned value management b economic value management c expected value management okay i want you to put your answer on the live chat what is that means of evm Okay, let's take a look. All right, okay, most of you say A. Okay, I still think soon most of you say A. Any other answer? 
Okay. Oh, okay. Very consistent. Right? Everyone's chosen A. EVM, right? This is another uh, abbreviation used in the project management world. Okay, good. So the answer is correct. It's EVM is earned value management. Right? This is where um, there's a formula to calculate the earned value. I mean, there are basically three things you need to know. Uh, earned value, plan value, and actual cost. Then you can do the full calculation for the all this formula over here. I mean, we use the S-curve to uh, visualize the project management uh, performance, right? The center line is the what you plan, right? The, the top line is the actual cost you spend, and then the, the bottom line is earned value, right? So we, we, we want to, of course, the data is near to this point, near to the center line as much as possible. So we do a run an analysis on this to see how well is the project is performing. So the earned value management is a really powerful technique to help project uh, managers, project team to predict the forecast. The, the expected outcome of it. Even though you are only 20%, 30% work is done, you can predict how much will be ended the project now. The next step, quickly we move on, is a quality management. There are three steps. Look into the strategy of how the quality management process to be, what kind of quality system you use for a project, and then we do a quality assurance and quality control. Managed quality is quality assurance. I mean, quality management, you use a lot, you use a lot of measuring tools to do that, right? Now, first, the next question, who shall be responsible for the project quality? Can anyone tell me? Is it A, quality department, B, the project manager, C, all project stakeholder? Who should be responsible for the project quality? Now, you put the answer on the live chat. Now, okay. Okay, I see people putting answer. All right, wait for the answer to show up. Who should be responsible for the project? All right, this is the a common question people will ask. All right, so wait for the answer to show up. All right, okay. So uh, some say C, most of you say C, some say A. Okay, even I've answered for B also. Now, or A, B, C also have a huh? majority is C. Yeah, correct. Now, the answer is C, all stakeholder. All stakeholder is responsible for the project quality. Next one. You may use a checklist to uh, verify the steps that you prepare for the project. You may use a control chart to uh, make sure you, the project the project or product produced in the, in the range on the, that we expect. You may use see the pattern of the quality of the product you measure. You may look, look at the root cause, the fishbone diagram, or we call it issue cover, castle issue cover diagram, or the cause effect diagram. You look at the 5M plus 1E, where is the root cause? You may use a Pareto chart to uh, uh, so called see where is the top defects, right? Now, that the next step we will look into the knowledge is resource. The resource here talk about human resource and physical resource, the two dimension. Human resource about people, physical resource talk about hardware, software, equipment, machine, tools, etc. Right? So, the start with the strategy, right? How do you go into what kind of resource we uh, and then you need to estimate the quantity and type that resource you need followed by how to bring them into the project, the next step. And then for the human resource, how we develop and manage the performance, develop the skill, and then make sure they perform. And the control is just to ensure we the resource is available for the project. We use the odd chart typically to identify or the plan to make it visualize which resource we need from which functional area. And we use a RAM chart, a RAM matrix to demarcation, who is responsible on which task, who is accountable on which task. So responsible is the person is the one who does the work. Right? Accountable is the one who uh, eventually will cost check or eventually accountable for the outcome. You may have more than one person to be consulted in form. Now, which of the following is not part of the team building process? You know, team building, we have uh, a few steps, right? Now, this is a quick refresh for the PMP. A, forming. B, storming. C, controlling, which is not part of the team building. Team building have five steps. Huh? Okay, let's see your answer. Let's write answer on the on the on the on the on the on the live chat. Okay, waiting for the answer to show up, huh? Which one? Okay, most of you say C. All right, team building, which is not part of the team building process, huh? Okay, very good. Oh, you have the correct answer, 
right? So it is it's the five step is a uh, 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 forming, storming, norming, right? And then performing, and the last step is a journey. Right? Contouring is not that. Okay, now project communication management. Uh, another three more steps, then we will end the presentation uh, soon. Now, plan communication management is the first step to strategize how you're going to communicate for the project and uh, who should be involved. I mean, what kind of meeting uh, of, of tools and methodology or, or communication technology model that you're going to use for communication? You have the second step is to manage the communication among the stakeholders and keep track, monitoring is to keep track who should know what, what should be this. Disseminate no. I mean this communication between the sender and receiver both have the, the five values that they may have the belief, value, attitude, and perception to is that the sender always encode the message where the receiver always decode. The transmission can be a direct face-to-face -face communicate using a phone call or use the apps, messages, or in the email, right? There are feedback in between, could be verbal or non-verbal or even symbolical. Now in the form the communication process may take up to in this format formal or informal written and an oral, all right? It can be in a, in a, in a verbal is a oral, uh, in a written is something in writing. It can be formal and informal. Anything in bad official signature is a formal written. No signature may be considered as non-formal, okay? But the non-verbal communication take up to 55% of the communication process, all right? Now, next question to you, how much time a full-time project manager typically spend on communication? A, 60%. B, 90%, C, 100%. So typically, uh, I mean, if a full-time program manager, how much time you spend on communication? Now, I want to hear your answer in the live chat. Put answer on the live chat now. Well, some people say, okay, I'm waiting for the answer to show up. Huh? Is it 60%, 90%, or 100%, A, B, or C? I'll wait for the, answer, wait for the, wait for the feedback, wait for the answer to show up. How many percent? Wow, okay. Many of you say B, uh, one of you say C, 100 percent, huh? Okay, continue to see more answer. B or C? Wow, many, many of you. Oh, it's a mixture, huh? All right, okay. No, okay. I, I think the answer is uh, uh, between B and C, eh? but the, the actual answer is about uh, 90 percent, about 80 to 90 percent. Uh, typically, uh, from the survey, people say uh, the project manager, full time manager, spend about 80 to 90 percent of time on communication, face to face meeting, writing report, coordinations, interviews, etc. 100 percent will be very really extreme. Uh, it may not be that extreme in that perspective. Now, uh, okay, quickly move on to the next knowledge area. We have three more knowledge areas at the end of the sessions now. The uh, risk management have a seven step from strategizing the risk planning to identify risk to prioritize risk. To look at the quantum of the risk, to choose a response strategy, to implement the risk response and monitor risk. These are a systematic way to deal with project risk. Now we usually break the risk into uh, different sections or different functional area. Could be the technical or engineering risk, external to the EF, organization to the other department, right? Project management risk. And usually we we'll use a risk register to capture the risk from identifying the risk, analyze the risk. Respond to risk and monitor risk. Now, every this this risk resistance need to be captured by as a project team, not the project manager alone. Trying right, to deal with that, so right? they have to uh, have a detailed um, uh, kind of a discussion, and then they have to have a baseline or guideline to score the analysis on the, on the scale of one to five, one to ten, and then they have to choose a suitable response strategy towards at least one response strategy for each risk identified. Some may be more than one, right? And then monitoring and control. And you keep track when this risk will be closed out. Now, some risk may be end in the beginning of the project, some towards the middle, some even until the end of the project. Okay. Now this is a guideline for the score uh, qualitative risk rating for high, medium, and low in terms of poverty and impact. So I quickly go to and then you may do this kind of tabulation to indicate which are the risks that are giving the highest um, number, and this will be your priority. Uh, the lower number is the lower priority. Now, these are the common risk response strategy, right? So from the escalation, avoidance, strength, prudence, mitigation, acceptance. Now, of course, the preferred strategy is avoidance. We don't want the risk to happen, right? We want to really isolate the risk, to really eliminate the risk. But sometimes you cannot avoid. You can only do mitigation. Sometimes you can choose 
um, if you are not well versed on handling the scope, you may outsource. You may transfer the risk to the to the third party to handle the risk for you. Right? Some risk, no choice. You must deal by yourself. You need to accept the risk, but you have to put some contingency reserve to deal with that. All right now, how many steps in the PIMBOK project risk management? Is it five, seven, or nine? This one you should know the answer. Right? You just answer. Okay? Just see the, the steps only. How many steps? Just quickly look at the answer. All right. Is it five, seven? Is it A, B, or C? Some of you say C. Any answer? Any other answer? How many steps involved? Okay, I saw the answer between B and C. Yeah? Okay. Okay, some is A, all right. How many steps involved in the project risk management from the paintball guide? This, how many steps? All right. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. Okay, we have three different answers. The answer is seven steps. B, right? boy is the answer. Now, procurement, uh, three steps. This is uh, uh, dealing with the procurement, dealing with the sellers, right? They have to strategize the procurement management process, conduct the procurement, and control the procurement. Now, I mean, the contract may be three common types of contract be used for procurement process, which is involving the fixed price contract, cost reimbursable contract, and T and M. Right? I mean, now the uh, if you're doing the outsourcing, you may have to do this kind of evaluations or for open tender to shortlist the the, the most appropriate or most preferred uh, seller. Right? Depends on the operation focus, the criteria that you want to choose, and also the weightage. You do this kind of scoring, right? You do technical evaluation followed by commercial evaluations. And uh, now, a purchase order, a PO is under which type of contract? Just a quick refresh. A, fixed price contract. B, cost reimbursable contract. And T is T and M. Which type of contract? For a purchase order. Okay, you can put an answer on the live chat. A PO is under which type of contract of procurement? All right, so I wait for the answer to show up. Purchase order is which type of contract? Okay. Is it a, okay, some of you already have the answer coming up. Uh, some of you say A, okay. Now we wait for the answer to show up, man. Eh? Okay, all A, okay, very consistent. Yeah, yes, correct. The, the answer is correct. The purchase order is a fixed price contract. Right? So it's, and it's, it's, it's very safe for the buyer. I mean, the, 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 the risk is less for the buyer, but the risk is higher for the seller for the fixed price contract. Now, you may have this kind of uh, incentive scheme to encourage the stakeholders to um, perform, I mean, the, the seller to perform that using this CPIF and FPI contract. I won't go into the formula, just tell you about it, how we how people use in the industry. We share the share the gain and loss, right? These are some of the formula. Now, stakeholder management, the last knowledge area on the pinball guide, have four steps in what to identify the stakeholders, plan stakeholder engagement, manage and monitor stakeholder engagement. Now, question, who is responsible to manage stakeholder expectation? Is it A, the sponsor, B, project team, C, project manager? Right, I want you to answer who is the who should be responsible to manage the stakeholder expectation. Okay, put your answer on the live chat now. All right. Okay, I, I see answer is coming up. Um, who should be responsible? All right. Okay, most of you say uh, okay. A mixture of answer I have now is a C and D. All right. Okay. Who is responsible for the stakeholder expectation? All right. All right. Okay. Hmm. All right. So a lot of you say C and some say B. Now the correct answer is a C. Project manager. Project manager is the one who is responsible for expectation stakeholder. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Now you may use the uh, this kind of a graphical approach to uh, identify your stakeholder. Either they are in this. First quadrant, this is the first priority, then the second quadrant, 
and third and fourth, right? This is a power interest rate. You may use a, this stakeholder engagement assessment metric to strategize how to engage your stakeholder. Now, C is the current situation, D is a desire. Now, eventually, we want all the stakeholders in the supportive column to support your project. Imagine if you have more than half the stakeholders are in this unaware, resistant, and neutral uh, column, your project will be in a, uh, it will be a tough time, it will feel better. Right, so you have to strategize to how to connect them using these two for stakeholder engagement assessment metric. Now, we're ending soon. Now, the professional responsibility as a PMP or certified project manager, the PMI expect people to be uh, hold up the responsibility, be be professional, respect others, treat others fair and honestly and transparent. Now, look at the future trend. I have another only a few more slides. Huh? What is the future trend in terms of project management? Now, the U.S. government uh, gets entered in the in the in the in the law say that if you are a project manager role, you must be a P certified PMP. All right. So that's why the Americans like a lot of PMP. If you work on a project manager position, you must be a PMP. Okay. Now in Singapore, the the job hiring, they prefer people with a PMP qualification. Most of the company or job advertisement. The advertised PMP is one of the requirements. In Malaysia, you see the construction industry, um, the CIDB did mention project manager role, you need to be a certified uh, construction project manager to be manage the construction project. So they try to push to these directions. That's a future trend happening in the in the in the project management uh, uh, job market. Right? Now Another future trend on project management. Now, traditionally, most projects are managed in waterfall. Waterfall is a uh, top down, right? Very predictive, very uh, forecast, very uh, kind of estimated upfront. Everything must define clearly and work on it accordingly. And no change is allowed. It's a, a minimum change or even no change allowed for the waterfall or predictive. When you come to the, 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 the other approach, it's called iterative. They, they do allow change, modify, right? And uh, along the way, you can go backward, uh, and create iterative. Of course, this is quite uh, disruptive. If some people feel that, wow, we keep on changing, my, my project never ends, right? But do, this is giving some flexibility, iterative. Incremental, they, they accomplish the work block by block, right? Maybe in the uh, in the, in the product backlog perspective, maybe this project we have five product backlog or ten product backlog to work on, and every product backlog, every string is two weeks to work on this increment outcome, right? Agile, we talk about a mixture of iterative and uh, incremental. That means they are uh, repetitive plus incremental. That is called agile. But now the the upcoming trend is um, because both have their pro and cons. It's not good enough. which is too agile. We also die. Too water wall. Waterfall, we also die. Too iterative, we also die. And too incremental, we also cannot right? perfectly get the work done. So the, other, the new one is called hybrid, which is a mixture of everything. Predictive, iterative, incremental, and even agile. Right. So this is the upcoming trend. Look at the Pinball Guy 7 edition. That will be the emphasis. Right. So you, you, you people have to know the skill set of this different uh, trend upcoming okay so um i have finished my slide any question all right any question before we uh, i i i have i i, I want to point there. i open the question sorry i've been run out by about five to eight minutes and uh, so the right <laughs> all right I think it's okay it's okay Thank yeah. you, uh, Dr. Mui, for the uh, very informative uh, okay, uh, session on project management. Uh, yeah. A lot of technical stuff as well. Okay, very good. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, who are attending this program, I think it's uh, beneficial to them uh, if they are, they are new to project management. Okay, uh, <clears throat> right now is the uh, Q&A session. Uh, anyone who wants to ask questions can actually uh, type on the text chat and our moderator will actually uh, post the uh, uh, question. Okay, on the uh, screen so that uh, Dr. Mui can see. Any question? You can write in the live chat, all right? You put your questions. I hope this session is a, a, a good, uh, informative, and also uh, for some of the PMP, it's a refresh session for you. 
right, for those uh, new artists, I hope that is very useful to you know how this uh, project management value, uh, the knowledge and skill that can help you to uh, continue to grow your, your, your career path. Uh, even if you work on the business, that is also very helpful. No question? I think, that, I think that's a question. Oh, that's what right. I said. Okay, can you post uh, it up? Maybe uh, Tony can post it up so that everyone can see. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. The question, is, the question is why not this two for future trend? Huh? All right. Why 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 it was not popular popular versus PMI uh, PMP? Okay, okay, good question by this uh P uh Y toy. Thank you for your question. Now Prince 2 um is from the Association of Project Manager APM. They are they are one of the pioneer organizations in terms of project management. Um apparently they do have their the way of project management approach should be, but then uh, somehow PMI come from behind. The popularity of PMI project management approach from the people card is overtake them. Maybe PMI rate of project management in the people card is more uh, more friendly or more easy to adapt, right? So that could be the one of the reason. And the certified PMP, you no need to retake the exam, but for Prince too, you need to retake the exam. Right? This, I was understand that could be another 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 thing that people they make it not so popular. I hope I answer your question. Okay. Next question. Okay, hey, you can uh, ask the next question. Is there any more question? All tired already, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all tired already. Okay. Or, 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 or already answered during the, the quiz. <laughs> okay, maybe during the quiz. Okay, okay uh, maybe we can call it a day, Dr. Mui, if there's no question. Yeah, I, I, I will show one more slide. Uh, I will show one more slide before. Okay, uh, okay. Oh, there's another question coming. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, from Brandon. Okay. Okay, from Brandon Tan Su Ying, uh, what are the common pitfalls uh, that cause project manager and the team to fail their projects? All right, this is a very good common question. What are the common problem, right? I would say the most of the common problem causing project failure it is the uh, poor stakeholder management and also poor risk management. These two areas, especially the risk management, uh, that always cause the project run into trouble. I mean, people are not able to foresee what going to went wrong, uh, go wrong in the project, and we didn't prepare any contingency plan to deal with the project risk. Risk management is one of the areas that uh, very much linked to the fa failure of the project. And the other one is the stakeholder the engagement of stakeholder is also another important perspective. The stakeholders are able to align and in the same pace to deliver a project and work as a team to address the project issue. That is make the difference for the project success or failure. I hope I answer your question, uh, Brandon. Yep, thank you, Dr. Mui. Any other question before I show my last slide? I want to share what is upcoming, all right, for those who are interested to join our free talk or even free uh, event. Huh? Okay, maybe I fresh up my slide. Uh, one more slide only. Okay, now these are our next free events um, for. for for those our PMP, uh, we do have a free revision session for people who uh, join our PMP before. Those have still not taken the exam. Right? We have a virtual live on my PMP to allow the fans free of charge on the first and second May. Right? You see, first May we're still working, <laughs> but it's in the, in, the, in the late afternoon. Then on the second of May, we also have a, a free a preview session for the PMP. This is a free seminar to, for those who want to uh, experience the. Uh, PMP training live on my how to look like whether it's effective because this is to clear the benefit of that for people who are continuing about live on my PMP training. So this one hour class session will be very beneficial for you. Now the third one is uh, our the next free talk in May. There are two more free talks in May. Um, on the shelf of May, we have the how a lean six sigma can help technology right to individual uh, whether through the challenge of pandemic and the night. COVID-19, right? And we learn the methodology by our, our speaker 
uh, this uh, KPM. And also on the 19th, uh, 22nd of May, we have the uh, Asia Program Management in the nutshell, right? So about the techniques on Asia Program Management um, that you can learn and use in the project. This is uh, another one hour uh, evening free talk. So I, I hope that is beneficial to you. You can sign up, you can contact Charlene. We'll, we'll send you, we'll connect you for this uh, evening talk to, uh, to register. Okay. All right. And uh, any any last question before we end the session? Okay. Uh, Jared, I, I pass over yeah. to you. It looks like uh, there's no more question. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mui, for spending uh, this evening with us. Uh, very productive. Thank you, everyone. And, uh, All right. Uh, on behalf of Sagi College, I would like to thank you. And uh, in front of you right now, uh, there's a QR code. And uh, if you can scan yeah. that and uh, go to the website, you have uh, you are able to fill up a form to get the uh, digital certificate uh, from Sagi College. Okay, uh, the link will be only open for 30 minutes. Okay, after that, it will be closed. And finally, we have this uh, telegram that... Uh, you can actually join by scanning the QR code as well so that uh, you can be informed of uh, future talks uh, conducted by SEGI and its partners, partners like Career Growth and as well as other partners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we are conducting a lot of talks uh, right now. And if you are part of the telegram, you will get to be notified. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mui. Hey, welcome, uh, Dr. Jarrat. And thank you, thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.